Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is season six, episode 17, So Ladylike. Melody is still discussing her conversation with Tiffany, with um, Kiki. You know, Tiffany is worried about her brand after seeing Kiki on the, on the Crime Stoppers. Kiki says she ain't worried about it. You know, she she this it's a legal matter at this point. She can't confirm or deny anything now that she got legal representation. And so listen. <laughs> I she says that she didn't relapse. She denies relapsing. Okay. Um, she feels good and confident. She feels good and confident. Melody is like, well, you know what, girl, you got my support. You got my support. Kiki says, thank you for your support because I ain't getting no support, not even from my family. Tisha has not called to check. But we know, we've we've already heard Tisha's disposition on all of this. She, she from a distance on it. <laughs> you know, she got a little prayer for you from a, dif from a distance. Um... Anyway, Mel, you know, in Tisha's, and, and Mel even, you know, says something in Tisha's defense. You know, y'all are rebuilding. You really shouldn't expect much. Shouldn't really expect that much concern, <laughs> you know, from her. Y'all are rebuilding. Kiki feels like that's just where they differ because regardless, that's family. And she would, you know, be ready to ride for, for, for her family. Um, But she says, you know what? That's why you can't expect you from other people which is very true that's very true you really can't expect everyone to be you <laughs> just because you move a certain way or you're you're you know you're righteous in all your ways or whatever the case may be you cannot expect for the next person to operate that way some people were not raised right that's just what it is some people were not raised right anyway um they talk about tisha's uh, not Tisha, Tiffany's party. Kiki says she's open to coming. You know, they've had their 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 spats in the past, but she's open to being there. Mel is just like, just be ready, girl. You know, they're going to be asking you questions. She's be equipped. <laughs> be ready and equipped for the 21 questions because they are coming. Marceau is back at the at the old house. He's renovating. He, he being sued, and so he's countersuing, whatever. Um... Tisha, she comes over there, drops in, tugging and pulling on her clothes because she ain't confident in what she wearing. Don't wear the crop top if this is what you got to do the whole time you got it on. You're not confident in wearing it, so don't even put it on. Why you put it on? You ain't, I mean, you, if you got to do all this tugging and pulling, that's my motto. <laughs> I know y'all ain't ass, but that's, that's, really, that's really something I live by when it comes to clothes. If I am tugging on it and pulling on it, that means I need to lose some weight or accept that this is the weight that is, that is going to be. And I'm, and I can just take this off and put something on more flattering and comfortable. It's easy. You know, don't, don't, don't stress yourself. <laughs> don't be out here like this all day, pulling, pulling your pants up over the fupa, making sure the fupa ain't hanging out, pulling the shirt down over the back fat, making the shirt. Man, please. <laughs> Anyway, they in there talking about about the the furniture budget. You know, she asks about a furniture budget budget. Marceau says, "Why they can't? Why can't we just rent to own?" She looking at him like he crazy. They not they they won't be doing that. They have this conversation about the finances. He feels like she spends too much on herself, on bags, on purses, <laughs> on on whatever, and she feels like he spends too much on cars. He done rewrapped his car, so it was it was it was gray. With some stuff on the side. Now it's yellow. He continues to 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 pour pour into his trinkets. And, and things of that nature. When he should be putting money into the renovations on the home. I mean, hell, Scott Manor. I mean, why y'all doing whole renovations on whole new house. But still didn't break no ground over there at Scott Manor. Let me find out y'all was just pulling up to a construction site to film because <laughs> this doesn't make any sense <laughs> you could have been over there doing that at scott manor but no you over here at this house the rent the rent the the, the rental property mm -hmm. anyway tisha and marcel be playing in our faces um 
but they 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 kind of come to an agreement like she really her bottom line was she want a new car you know because if he not gonna be saying he because he's he always talking about he putting it towards some something dealing with the house and and he spending it on himself and his thing is well i get less than you anyway i don't say nothing to you about what you buy you know they have that conversation it's really sticky when it comes to spouses and money especially when both people provide when both people got 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 some got some say so when both people are confident within themselves because there are times that he really wants her to be the lowly meek and mild you know she don't say nothing you know Whatever he does, it's fine. <laughs> you know, she'll take her little allowance as she gets them. He want her to be like that, but she's not like that. She's not that girl. She's not that girl. So, yeah, she wants she want a new car as well. <laughs> she wants to buy purses. Yep. Shoes. <laughs> Wigs. She just like just like anybody else. I don't know what Marcel thinks she should just be spending on the children, I guess. But either way, they they agree that that they're going. I don't know. I don't know if they came to an agreement or not because there was nothing to disagree on really. Um, I guess he gonna let her know. I mean, I guess she gonna let him know what she needs as far as the furniture goes. You know, cause he he's just like give me a number. Just tell me what it is. As far as the car goes, just go pick something out. They really be acting like they rolling in it, ain't they? I just some about the two of them. I just don't buy it. But okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, I can move on from that. Oh, they they when they did mention how much each of them were getting, I guess, and they were calling it an, an allowance. I don't know where this extra income is coming from, but she's she's getting about five thousand a month, and his his allowance is three thousand five hundred. Of course, being the custodial parent, <laughs> she has to. Um, care for, you know, her three children and on top of that. So that's, that's, that's more than likely the reason why she's getting more, um, as far as their, their allowance goes. Um, Stormy, she drops by to meet Tiffany. Tiffany solicited her help on planning this, this breakfast with Ace and Tiffany. Um, Stormy asked about the guest list. Tiffany asked if, um, she and Tisha are going to be okay. She ain't worried about Tisha. You know, Tisha hasn't even RSVP yet. So, I mean, she may or may not be coming, but Stormy ain't worried about it either way. Either way, like, she's over it. Her issue really is with Marceau. He the one. He the bitch. <laughs> um, she finds, Stormy finds out that Kiki is invited and she's confusion. You know, shocked. Like, what? You invited? You want her around? It's about your baby. And you want that negative energy around? Like, you're going to invite that? She couldn't understand. She couldn't understand why she would want her around. <laughs> Tiffany says, as long as she doesn't steal any centerpieces, you know, steal any locks, you know. Tiffany says she doesn't trust her, but you're going to let her come see your baby. <sighs> Girl, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Anyway, Stormy, she checks in with Tiffany. Tiffany is telling her she's overwhelmed. I'm so oh, she's so overwhelmed. She has this to do, that to do. She has teenagers. One of them is shopping for a car. It's just so overwhelming. Oh my God, it's just so much to do. And I'm gonna start to cry about it because I just want people to feel sorry for me. But my husband told me that this would be how it was gonna be, and now he doesn't even film because he hates it. He hates it here. And I'm sitting at home like, mm. a man told you, he told you he didn't want no baby. He told you a baby was a bad idea. He told you you was already too busy to begin with. And now you want to cry about being overwhelmed. Girl. <laughs> but you were so sure. But you, I can take the baby to work. I can do this. I, it ain't nothing. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. It's not. It's slowing you down a bit. Stressing, stressing you a bit. Oh well, tough shit. <laughs> anyway, um, it's date night for the Scots. They're meeting the Fletchers for dinner. The Fletchers, they wanna, they just wanna know why they weren't invited to speak at the Black Espo. 
That's, that's, that's their bottom line. Why y'all ain't invite us? Marceau say, you didn't feel invited? <laughs> He's a piece of work. He is a real piece of work. He, feel, he really feels like he don't really know what either of them do, which is BS. That is BS. He's talking about, I thought that you, he thought Chris was the one, you know, making all the money and, and she was just his pretty wife. She owns a few daycares that have been in business over 20 years. Don't play with her. And don't play with Chris. And Chris, tell him, don't play with your wife. Then just reduced her to wife, pretty wife. He belongs in a cave. Marceau is a caveman. He belongs in a cave. Very, something is just wrong. And I really, I honestly, I don't think Marceau liked women like that. I think he kind of got like a disdain, like deep, deep, deep in his heart. He don't really like us like that. <laughs> um, and it's because it shows. It, it, it shows. It made me think, how do you, what, how do you feel about your mother? How do you feel about your mother? How did how how it, are, is their mother still with us? I want to say I think they said that their mother passed away. Or has she been on the show? I can't remember. Either way, that's where it starts. And and he he anyway. Um they say that they're the original black couple. You know they're they're the original black couple goals. Um, you know they they were the the Beyonce and Jay Z of Huntsville. Don't get it twisted. Y'all thought that it was Martell and Melly. Nah, they the ones. They the OGs. Um, and so put some respect on it. Just just put some respect on it. Don't don't play with it. <laughs> Marceau says that it was an oversight. You know it was an oversight that they weren't invited, and it might have been because. Um, they're friends with Mel and Martel. They're just, wor they're working towards something. They're unsure. It's all, it's all bullshit. Cause Nell is like, I mean, I went in high school. I can be friends with whoever I want to be friends with. I just don't, I just don't understand. Um, the Fletchers ask about the comeback group. Did everybody buy back in? No, everybody did not buy back in. <laughs> Mel and Martel, they ended up, you know, coming to the to the Black Espo, but they, you know, they didn't, they not back in it or nothing. Nell says she heard that nobody wanted to speak because y'all weren't paying. And Marceau confirms, no, we were not paying. Nobody got paid. It was about giving back our intellectual property, you know, to the community. Marceau says that, um... What we did was we didn't charge them for their services. <laughs> Marceau is like, they paid out of pocket, so they weren't going to pay them people. In his mind, he's not paying anybody to talk about their, their t-shirt business. So now he's just throwing throwing subliminals at mail. Y'all had a whole business, like as a couple, Scope. That was, that was the Scots and, and the Holtz. So, so you just gonna dis disregard that whole business and 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 diminish them folk down to t-shirt sellers, and not even them folk, just Mel. You just gonna you just gonna diminish her down to selling t-shirts. Chris say, don't y'all sell t-shirts? They sell t-shirts at Black. They had the pink and green. Um, <laughs> they had the pink and green edition. Y'all, it was, it was, it must have been round, <laughs> it must have been round January where y'all, un, un, you know, you rolled out the pink and green, uh, limited edition for the, for the K's, for your wife. And that's nice. But you sell t-shirts too. So I don't do that. Um, Tisha, she switches the subject and she's just going to ask flat out out of nowhere. Have you guys ever dealt with infidelity? And they were like, yes. Or it was either happy. No. How did y'all deal with infidel with, <laughs> no yeah it was first she asked have you ever dealt with it and how did you deal with it that 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 should have been a counter a counter response to that you know same way you did or how did you how do you deal with it it was a dig and it was unnecessary 
Um, Naomi, she really didn't know how to take, she really didn't know how to take Tisha's question. She's like, well, she's trying to have a, like a woman to woman moment. She's trying to bond with me. I don't know what she got going on. Anyway, Tiffany pulls up to her baby reveal and the people still putting the space together. They say it rained, so they had to make sure they could get everything in there as dry as possible. They are behind. <laughs> Stormy pulls up. Yeah, a lot of their guests, you know, just start showing up and they are just still in preparation, putting things, putting things together, putting the space together. I know she was mad about that. Girl, you don't ever do that. Don't you don't you dare show up <laughs> like she was you know trying to jump into action and try to see what she could do i wouldn't hire them folk no more um they talk about tisha and um the black espo oh melody arrives and when melody gets there she speaks to everybody and this time this was a a um audible Hello <laughs> towards Stormy. And Stormy still, she's she just going to be looking at her purse, not paying attention. Melody say, I see you, girl, but it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. You can't say you didn't hear me. You really can't say that. Uh, but anyway, they talk about Tisha and the Black Expo. Tiffany, um, she felt slighted, you know, as well about not being asked to speak. I'm like, what was all y'all going to say? Talking about she was, you wanted to speak. What was you going to say? Did you have something prepared? Anyway, hopefully Tisha shows up to the thing because she hasn't arrived yet. But anyway, Stormy, she shares her grievances. You know, she says um, she should have sat it out like Tiffany. Kimmy shares that they paid. They paid as well, that they ended up paying that $100 as well. And it was it was kind of unbeknownst to her because she said she didn't know about even being charged $100 till like yesterday. Um... Tisha and Stormy, they're okay. Like I said, Stormy isn't mad anymore. This is just them, you know, everybody's in, in one room. So everybody's filling each other in on these, you know, side conversations that they've had. Melody and Nell, they talk about, they sit down and talk about the dinner that they had with the Scots. Nell right away with the mess. And she might be a bit messy because she be ready to stir it. She be ready to say, and then they said, and then he said, and then she said, that's Nell. We met with them, and do you know what Marceau said? <laughs> Marceau said this, that, and the third about you. He said that, and this, and this, and that. And Melody's just sitting there getting boiled up. <laughs> just eating it up, but just biting the bait. <sighs> Mel says she done had, listen, she done been had her businesses. She's not, she, she's not, I, I don't know where Marceau got this, this t-shirt business as if, <clears throat> that's the only thing she's done. She's been in business since 2008. And so don't play with her either. And you know, Nell, her, she too has businesses. And so we're not just going to play with her either. Um, but Marceau threw jabs. He threw jabs at her and her business. Mel, she ended up, you know, kind of having to throw her EP, her EP card out there. Like, I'm put, I put checks in your bank account. I did that. The clothes on his back, <laughs> I bought. The shoes on his feet. Eyeball. That's a little woman to woman. <laughs> if you ever been in love. Y'all know that one? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> she said, hello, Barbara. This is Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, don't no, nobody ever come to me woman to woman by nothing. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> um... But yeah, she had to throw an EP card out there. I, I created all of this. I created the very platform that's putting checks in your bank account. Don't play with me. This was this was my dream. I brought it to I brought it to fruition. Thank you very much. It's the Melody Cherie show. And it is. So all this is it. Listen, we here because of Melody Holt. We here because Melody Holt had a dream. She had a dream, she had a vision. She she took it to Carlos King and and here we are. Anyway, she thinks it's pathetic and I do too. Marceau is pathetic. That's where we leave off. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. These people gonna get on my nerves, especially that damn Tisha and Marceau. I see this this day season to be under my skin. I assume, even though they, I feel like Marceau is always getting on my nerves. He's always getting on my nerves. He, I think he likes being a villain. 
which is why he will get on camera and tell a woman that she's just his pretty wife. He like he like he like doing that kind of shit to women. He loves it. Like I said, he don't like us like that. So he he has no qualms with embarrassing us, being condescending towards us, being passive aggressive, giving us all of that. He don't care. Cause he don't like black women like that. Let me not say black women. I really think it's a woman thing. I don't even think it's a black woman thing. I think he just don't see it <laughs> for the female species as a whole, which is why he treats them the way he does. Anyway, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.